Hello everyone, welcome to the inaugural episode of ARG Labs. Today we're going to be looking at the Radio Shack TRS-80 Clark Computer 2. I'm going to spin this thing around real quick. This is your reset button. Right here is your channel selector and you've got RF out. You've got your, uh, there's your coax that'll go to the little monitor I've got. Uh, that's going to be, we're going to use to uh, see the output. Here you've got your cassette hookup, which is all this really had at the beginning. Serial and two joystick ports. And finally you've got your power button. Uh, this computer was obtained by me at a, the Hillbilly Flea Market for $20. This was the childhood computer I had when I was growing up, and so I jumped at the chance to grab it. Uh, I'm going to use this for the output. Just plug this in here, and there we go. Uh, that's what the... Uh, Coco 2 looks like when it powers on. Now this one's been locking up on me, so we're going to take it apart and clean some chips and have a look around inside, see how it goes. So, when I bought this, it came with one cartridge, and here it is, Color File. Uh, this is a ancient databasing program that uh, you can use to keep track of your doctor bills and, <laughs> and your insurance and whatnot. We'll flip it in here and see if it works. Uh, I know I've had it on, so I know it'll come up. Again, this thing was locking up on me, so we're going to give it a good cleaning. Uh, if you're not familiar with the uh, TRS-80 Clark Computer 2, uh, this was widely available in America at Radio Shack, and was uh, produced by Tandy Corporation out of Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, the original TRS-80 line uh, were monochrome monitors with a built-in screen. It ran on the old Z80 processor, which is pretty popular. This, on the other hand, does not run on the Z80. Uh, this runs on the uh, 6809E Motorola processor. Uh, hilariously, the TRS-80, the 80 means the Z80, so they just never changed the name. So why they kept it, I'll never know. So, you'll see this keyboard here. It's known as the Melted Keyboard. Uh, the very first TRS-80s had a what's called a Chiclet Keyboard, which was just a horrible keyboard. So I was happy that this came with this new one. There's the uh, last of the screws. I went ahead and saved us the trouble of taking the screws out and just pulling them all out. We'll pull this off here. You can see this keyboard. It's a, it's a good keyboard. It wasn't popular. You can see the case is in pretty good shape. Uh, clean. And uh, surprisingly uh, fresh inside. Not a lot of soot. Uh, the, uh, but the keyboard was good. Like I said, some people liked it, some people didn't. You'll see this is a pretty compact system. I mean, for the day, it's really quite compact uh, and uh, nice. Here are the little pegs that hold the keyboard in place. I've taken some of this uh, stuff out already. Here's the ribbon cable that hooks into that uh, ribbon connector port on the uh, keyboard. We'll just pop that out. Um, a little spot on the back of the keyboard. I'm assuming that's meant to be there. I'm not sure why it's open like that. See the markings in the back of this. A lot of them might be important in case anyone's doing some research and using this video. So you can see that the uh, the internals on this are pretty solid. Now, some things are socketed, some aren't. These two screws need to come out to uh, pull out the, uh, uh, the control panel. Plus this one here, I'll go ahead and take those out off camera. Now, that's pretty much the internal screws. That's pretty much all you've got to deal with. So once we pull off the uh, covering here. Here's your power supply. As far as I can tell, it's a 5 volt power supply. And these uh, slip on these little pegs, and you've got your ground over here. Uh, caps look good. The uh, RAM, I believe there's the bottom, it's soldered in. Some of the chips are soldered, some are socketed. And see, these little clips are what hold the, uh, the safety lining that goes along the bottom of this thing in place. And so, they're even marked too, if you look real closely. He's, so we'll have to pull those clips off to remove this thing out of its casing. Of course, there's your on-off button. And so it's just a matter of popping those off. So we'll go ahead and take this thing off so we can pull it out here. And now you just pull right off. It's easy as pie. And I'm going to uh, clean the chips off camera. Uh, with a pencil eraser and stick them back in and see if that makes a difference. But it's not too difficult to pull that right out. It just takes a few minutes. This thing does have some an oddity, which are these two bottom side caps. Very unusual. 
So let's hook this thing back up and we'll see if it locks up. At this point, I've had it on for about 45 minutes with no problem. So it looks like cleaning the chips helped out. Well, that was a quick look at the internals on the Coco. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll come back with some more Coco content later on down the line. Adios, everyone. Thank you.